What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Kick Ash Podcast. We are back here today to discuss the latest happenings from SmackDown with Hollywood Rock being back, um, the bloodline progression, how that leads into WrestleMania. Uh, actually, a, a few updates, or one specifically that I wanted to touch on from Raw as well that ties into the bloodline it was pretty, I don't say unexpected, I just wasn't expecting it at that time. Um, but I'm happy to see we got some development. And that was, of course, in the main event with Jay Isu and Jimmy, of course, costing him the main event and the or i'm sorry costing him the victory in the main event for the ic championship against gunther so we'll touch on that as well but first we'll obviously be starting with smackdown starting with the rock the bloodline segment all that good stuff and then we'll do a little bit of an elimination chamber preview here as well but again thank you so much for checking out the show i appreciate you guys listening downloading wherever you're doing so watching it on youtube listening on apple Podcasts, spotify whatever uh it's just cool that you're here so i appreciate you guys for checking out the show um like i said we'll dive right into it here and just get started so we don't waste too much time uh with smackdown though it was pretty much what i think everyone was expecting but we just didn't see exactly or we didn't know exactly what route that they were going to go in in the sense of how heavy they're going to go with heel rock right and hollywood rock and i loved it from jump i think the segment ended up being around 17 18 minutes in total um which of course was the main event for smackdown and it was another sold out night between smackdown and raw both sold out nights which is great again for your business it, and i say that just because to me it, it's cool to see just because we're, we're a few years back five six years back uh it just wasn't looking as hot you know what i mean so just to see what the business is now uh that's why i myself reference it not because uh i don't know and and i just love the business side of, of wrestling probably i don't say more than the on-screen product but the business side is just what fascinates me the most so if i throw out numbers and statistics and stuff like that that's that's why so just uh bear with me guys there but like i said smackdown itself this segment with the rock went about 17 18 minutes and they actually had roman and the bloodline come out and introduced the rock you know and and kind of set the stage for the rock which i think was very interesting and very very telling rather and i think that's going to be a little bit of a seed uh that's planted going forward granted roman didn't seem taken aback or offended by opening he actually seemed that he wanted to right and it seemed that character wise that's most likely what he would have chosen but it's still very interesting that they didn't come out all as a group or the rock didn't come out first or anything like that Roman came out, did his normal spiel with the acknowledge me, ran down the fans a little bit, and then set up the scene really for The Rock, which again, I don't necessarily disagree with. It was just very interesting to me. Um, and again, I'm very intrigued to see uh, they weren't advertised for this this coming Friday. I think this, the, well, I know they actually ended up taping. Uh, it was a twofer last week on SmackDown. They taped um, last week, or they taped this week's episode last week since they're traveling to Australia for Elimination Chamber. So I don't think, though, I didn't look at any spoilers or anything like that. So I don't think they did anything else with The Rock on that night, which in some ways it would have made sense, right? Since he's right there and you're taping it, but I, I don't think they did. So uh, TBD on that, but... Regardless, the next time the bloodline comes out, because The Rock is now officially part of the bloodline, I'm very intrigued to see if The Rock is going to come out as a group and come out with Roman. And it's, I say that because it's not like the bloodline has their own specific stable music, right? Like Evolution, for instance, when Triple H went out for his own title defenses or by himself, he had his own entrance music theme play, right? Right? So when but when evolution came out as a group they came out to a completely different theme so i say that because it's interesting to see if the next time the bloodline comes out now that the rock is officially part of the bloodline if the rock is going to come out to roman reigns music uh which may not be a big deal to a lot of people but it's it's something that i i wonder because it's just a little a little key factor and a little seed i guess i keep going back to um that i think is being planted and that's just building to this story um but with that being said the rock himself um we'll, we'll kind of uh, focus and shift back to the rocks promo he and what he was wearing so first of all he came out wearing a versace uh cut off shirt which was just perfect if if you were around and you watched him in the uh late 90s i think what was it 98 97 98 um prime rock prime rock t-shirts right maybe even 99 but late 90s right with the whole extravagant t-shirts i remember 
uh, my father actually, he, which is crazy to, to bring up, but he actually, uh, we, it was back when I would get the WWE magazines in the mail and they would have the WWE shop portion as well. And sometimes like a separate catalog came for the shop portion and they were selling replica rock shirts and they were like four hundred, five hundred dollars And he loved the shirts for some reason, but obviously wasn't going to spend that much money. Couldn't afford that. So, uh, but I say that because that's immediately what I flash back to. Right. And I'm sure all of us did. It's no, no big revolution i'm going over here but it was just cool it was a small yet big detail to the conversion of the rock back into hollywood rock into bad guy rock um and i love that where he had the glasses the vest right but we're getting like a slow turn back into the rock and i say slow turn in the sense that it wasn't a complete 180 um even though i guess maybe in a lot of ways it is right he's shooting on the fans uh calling us inbreds and things like that um but it made sense, right? And it's not like, oh, you guys suck just because you guys suck. But he actually gave meaning behind it, too, and specific reasons. And in his mind, reasons that are very accurate. And a lot of ways they are. Cody came back and and, and ruined, quote unquote, the main event for him and his, and his family, the bloodline. Now, I still wish that they would address the whole, oh, he didn't actually. And because and, let me back up. The Rocks had mentioned that... Um, you can't just get what you want type thing. And you can't just like pretty much cry over spilled milk type shit, but they're not referencing that Cody won the rumble this year. He's a back-to-back -back rumble winner. And I don't know if they're just saving that for when Cody eventually makes his great return uh, to face them, you know, face to face again, another confrontation. Um, and I'm still to kind of put a pin in that. I'm, I'm still kind of shocked that Cody didn't, uh, interfere i predicted that last week that could was gonna let the rock spiel and, and go over his his normal stuff and all that and but i i could just I, if i put money I, if there's the betting contest i would have put money on i would have lost the money right but uh i could have just sworn that he would have come out there and interrupted at least and the perfect time would have been when the rock raises the finger and acknowledges the people not acknowledges the people but the, does the bloodline acknowledgement so the people can acknowledge the bloodline rather i could have sworn and that would have been prime time for Cody to come out and just spear the rock you know what i mean um but i, I get you probably and, and especially with the amount of time that we have have left between now and mania you want to hold off and you want to make sure that you have enough content to fill the weeks coming forward and that's probably something that you'll want to advertise but to me, it's just, man, like, could have got bitch slapped, for <laughs> lack of better words, um, at the press conference. And this is the first time we knew for certain that The Rock and Roman Reigns were going to be in the same building. So the fact that Cody didn't even want to make an attempt to to come and just get some type of revenge is just kind of odd to me. But I'm hoping, like I said, maybe they're saving that for Cody to address later on as well. But The Rock's promo in a whole... Um, like I said, he he hit his his standard lines, but he especially with um, uh, the Rock says line, he told the fans that they lost their their sing along privileges, which little things like that I like. Um, but now looking forward and and why I mentioned it earlier, I really think that they need to change his music. You know what I mean? The music if the, if you smell just gets people hype and and excites people. So I think that they need to ideally revert back to his Hollywood rock theme. I don't know if, if they have the rights to that. I don't know who had created that. But man, that I don't even know that it's I don't even know what he's saying. Like it sounds like it was in 2003 if you guys want to go back and check it out if you haven't heard it or if you didn't watch during that time frame. Um the Hollywood rock it would the opening video package it would have like a it was like a plane or like an eagle or something like soaring in like the night in the night skies and um and then he, he would say like like two or three seconds later it would kind of like be building 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 to the rock saying it's it's conking it's conquering i don't know i never knew what he said there <laughs> so please if you guys know let me know um but then it would drop into like a, a new rendition of his theme and just like a slight tweak on, on the actual musical portion of his entrance. But it took out completely the If You Smell the Rock is Cooking and all that. So I think that that would be a big a big change. And that would be really like a punch. And really like, okay, like this is a new rock. You know, this isn't the people's champ. This is, this is the rock. You know, a different version of Hollywood rock. And an updated version of Hollywood rock. Like the Bloodline version. You know what I mean? So I think we're going to get that though. I, I hope we get that. Again, maybe it's not a big deal to anyone else, but to me, that just kind of stands out. Um, 
but yeah, you know, we we got pretty much the typical what you would expect uh, from the Rock. He ran down the crowd, called us all inbreds, mentioned the fact that they blew in in the finals uh, against Michael Jordan back in the 90s um, since they were in Utah. But it was great. You know, it was great, especially if you if you love that version of The Rock. Um, it was definitely entertaining. And I'm very intrigued to see what they do going forward. Like I said, um, intrigue must be the word of the day. <laughs> um, but I really think that they have something good here obviously right but i think it's very i think it's gonna be very telling and i think it's gonna be what they want to end up doing with it and how long i think i think the longevity and the the time frame that we have with the rock is is the main thing and the main determination of of what they do going forward storyline wise because again my money is is on the Rock and Roman Reigns facing off at WrestleMania 41, but it's all about how we get there. Now, speaking of the bloodline, really quick before we move on to the Elimination Chamber preview, um, or predictions, rather, or I guess it's both. <laughs> um, I love that Jimmy cost Jay the IC Championship. I wasn't expecting that. Of course, I didn't expect Jay to win on Raw this last night, actually, but I wasn't expecting Jimmy to be the one to come out here and interrupt and, and, and do it the way he did. You know, he didn't necessarily run into the ring. He, it was, a I, I think, I'm not sure if Jay had just hit the super kick, but Jay had obviously gone for the pinfall and the referee was counting to two. And then the bell, someone started ringing the bell. Referee looked pissed, looked to the back to the timekeeper's area. And it was a do it in a hoodie, which of course was Jay or was, of course was Jimmy. Um, but I love the fact that he didn't run right into the ring or anything like that. And it was actually Jay that initiated the the uh, aggression. Jay was kind of pissed off. I, well, not kind of. He was pissed off in the ring that he cost him the IC championship. And then as Jimmy was being escorted by secure with security around the ring and being taken to the back, Jay, instead of going for another pin attempt on Gunther or anything like that, he dove to the outside, knocked out Jimmy, took care of that. Went back in, but then Gunther ended up getting, I think it was a roll-up for, it was a sleeper, then Jay reversed it, and then I think Jay, I don't have it pulled up here, but I think Jay ended up getting a super kick on Gunther, but then Gunther was able to counter into a, a roll of victory, essentially, for Jay, or for Gunther, rather, to retain the championship. We're not going to see Gunther in Australia. There's, I think, still something with his work visa. He can't leave the U.S. for a certain amount of time. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but that's going to prohibit him from going to Australia. So we're not going to get a defense there, which is likely what we got at the Monday leading into it. Um, But it was a good match. You know, it was pretty solid. I think the, like I said, the the way that they set it up, I wasn't expecting, but it was it was very well done. And I was I was kind of getting concerned a little bit that they weren't going to address Jimmy and Jay or at least just wait till, or that they're going to wait till the last minute rather, but they are, it looks like getting back on track with their feud and, and leading towards their eventual matchup at WrestleMania 40. Cause I think it's just perfect. And I think it, it literally writes itself, the city of brotherly love in WrestleMania uh, in Philadelphia for WrestleMania 40, you open up WrestleMania night one with Jimmy and Jay. I just think that'd be perfect. Unless you're not going to do anything with the Rock Roman or anything bloodline bloodline related on night one, then you open up night two with Jimmy and Jay. But I just think that would be perfect, and I think that's it. It pretty much writes itself, you know. And I'm just very, I'm happy for them. You know what I mean? Like these guys have been in the WWE for a long time, and for I don't even know how long they went. It was like seven, eight years where they didn't even have a match on WrestleMania. Maybe it wasn't that long um, as a tag team, but it was crazy, you know. Um, and they've been such a staple, especially lately in the tag team division. Um, and to see how they've branched off and Jay has really become his own dude and main even Jay. And it's very believable. It's not just not just something that the fans are just going along with it just because. Like People believe in him. People love him. I'll, I'll never forget the kid at the Rumble who had this light-up sign for main even Jay and it's a yeet on it or something. Um, and he was going back and forth with this other kid who was saying, no yeet. Uh, this kid was saying, yeet, no yeet. So they were just going back and forth. Um, but this kid loved Jay. And it was it's like that pretty much every city they go to. So it's really cool to see what Jay has, has been able to do for himself and Jimmy for that matter too. I, I love Jimmy's facial expression and his reactions to little things like that. He does enough to where it, it 
plays along with the story or and plays along with the segment that he's in, but it's not too much where it, he's taking over or he's making it laughable or he's taking away from the severity of it. It's just so well done. And I think the, the Usos themselves <clears throat> have just really shown us what they can do individually. And I think it's, it's, it shows and it, it lives up to their talent. You know what I mean? And I think, a lot of times when tag teams break up, especially brothers, there's one that's more popular than the other or one that's better than the other. And I don't really think that in this. I think they're both equally suited. And I think Jay, yes, is is maybe getting over more, but that's because he's a good guy. You know what I mean? And and what Jimmy does is supposed to be cheer, obviously. So I think that's a big distinction there. But I'm just so happy and, and looking forward to their match because i think they're gonna have a kick-ass match too like i think that that singles match that they're gonna have at mania first of all it's gonna be at mania and you know they want to show off but this is what they've been waiting for and you know this is what they wanted as as brothers growing up so it's cool to finally or not finally but it's cool to see how we progress and and naturally float here too and it's nothing that that feels forced or we're doing it just to do it or just to shake things up or for a swerve, you know, it actually, the story led to this match. So very much looking forward to that. Not that it's official, but it's, it's a pretty much a no brainer at this point. Um, but moving on to the elimination chamber preview here, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Like I said, and there's not really that much to go over with the preview itself. Um, but like I said, sorry, I guess my talk just came in the room. Um, but the Elimination Chamber, of course, is being held in Perth, Australia. So it's going to be a, a big night for uh, a personal favorite of mine, Rhea Ripley. Uh, I'm super happy for her. So I'm, I'll just start off with her match here uh, for the Women's Championship versus Nia Jax. And of course, with all of us, well, not all of us, but the majority of us being here in the U.S. or North America, uh, depending on what time zone you're in, for, for me, it's going to be starting at 5 a.m., on Saturday. So I don't know if I'll be waking up at 5 a.m. specifically. Um, I like to sleep in on Saturdays um, or sleep in as much as I can. So I'm not sure if I'll be watching that exactly at five or some point in the morning, but definitely going to start my day off with it, which is cool. Um, us Americans over here are spoiled with, uh, of course, wrestling being a, a, a North America predominantly based, at least if you're watching WWE and stuff like that, depending on your home wrestling promotion, I'll say, um, determines the the time frame that you're used to watching it in. So we're spoiled over here. Um, and obviously with WWE being the, the juggernaut of them all, a lot of our European and, and friends from around the world, for that matter, have to watch at ridiculous times. So I think us over here can, uh, can bite the bullet for one night or one day rather. Um, but yeah, I'm super, it's, it's, and it's cool for me too, to have like an afternoon pay-per-view or a morning pay-per-view. It just changes things up and it's kind of a cool start to the day. And especially for me, since I have to work Saturday night, it's cool to actually be able to watch it and then go back later and, and finish my day. Um, so all that bullshit out of the way. <laughs> um, with that being said, the, I don't know if they're going to open with this. I was going to say what could be the possible main event, um, just with the setting and, and everything. Um, I'm very intrigued to see if if they're going to have Rhea and Nia Jax main event, just as, you know, the fact that they're in, in Australia, Rhea Ripley's home country. Um, but I, I think they're probably not going to. It's probably going to be the match before the, the last main event chamber, which I, if I had to guess, I would say they open with the women's and close with the men's chamber matches. And then Rhea's matches is right there before that last chamber match. I think this is going to be a very solid match, though, her versus Nia. Again, if you guys have listened to me before, I'm a big Nia supporter. Um, I think she's she gets a lot of shit. Um, and not my place to judge if rightfully so or not, I, unless it's completely obvious. Look, I don't know who injures who or who's responsible for what, right? Um, I haven't been trained, so it's not my job to sit there and look for that. I'm just a spectator. So from my view, Nia Jax is entertaining. <laughs> and I know that's not the popular choice, um, but she is not winning the title here. It would be insane if Nia Jax were to win here so my money not surprisingly is going on Rhea Ripley to set up who I think is going to win the women's chamber match which has been pretty obvious at this point being Becky Lynch unless they go something drastic um just to shake things up like a Liv Morgan possibly um I could see them maybe wanting possibly being intrigued to do that but I don't again if my money had to be put down on it I would go Via Ripley is retaining her championship. No surprise there. And then leading into our WrestleMania women's championship match versus Becky Lynch. Um, again, you have a lot of good competitors here. The champ there are the chamber 
match rather for the women's side will be Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, and Naomi and Raquel Rodriguez as well. Raquel was added also. Um, but <clears throat> again, the sleeper choice that I said or that I mentioned rather would be Liv Morgan, but I don't see that right now. I see it going Becky Lynch. Um, so again, nothing to, oh, wow, shocker there. Um, but moving on to the next chamber match, or before we get there, rather, we do have the tag team championship. Again, I don't see anything shocking that's going to happen there. Maybe they will if they want to just throw a curveball in and have something that we're not all expecting um, by having British Strong Style. But I think they're going by a different name now. I, I don't I don't have the new updated name here. Um, but British Strong Style, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bay facing off against the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, the tag team champions, the undisputed tag team champions, rather. I don't see them wanting to take the, uh, the championships off of Judgment Day yet unless you want to accelerate and move forward with the judgment day breakup but again i don't i'm not seeing that right now i don't think they really need to break up at this point or and not at this point but well yes and no um but as at least as of this moment rather is what i'm saying i don't think the judgment day needs to break up right now i think you can still get some more out of it um because i i was gonna say maybe if you want to like i said throw a curveball and then that puts more dissension between the judgment day and maybe have a Finn Balor versus Damian Priest singles match at Mania. But I don't know. I think that's kind of accelerating things. And I just, I don't think they're in that, that mode yet, but moving on to the final match, like I said, that's a very brief card here, the chamber and rumble matches or, or pay-per-views PLEs normally are. Uh, but with the men's side of things, we have Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton versus Lashley versus LA Knight, Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul. I really wish they would have thrown Dominic in there. Um, I, I think they, they really uh, missed an opportunity there along with, um, I, I think a, a commenter had said that as well. So I'm right there with you. I think that they missed a, a good opportunity with having Dominic in there. But with that being said, I don't really see any of the curveball here. I think Drew McIntyre, this is his moment. I think this sets up what I predicted as well. It's just, I don't know if it's going to be a triple threat, but I just see Drew McIntyre versus Seth at WrestleMania for the heavyweight championship. And like I said, I, I'm excited to see what Drew does between the build between the chamber to Mania. I think he's obviously been on fire, which is, I think, the general consensus. Um, he's been on fire lately with his character and this new version of himself and the confidence that he has is just insane. Whether he's always had it, he just didn't get an opportunity to really show it or it's just newly found confidence. He's, he's just kind of building as we go. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing, bro. <laughs> it's 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 very intriguing. It's one of the highlights and one of the things I look forward to watching on Raw. But I think I think the I think the men's chamber match is probably going to be the chamber match of the night. Um, if I had to take a, a stab at that between the two, I think we're going to get something crazy out of Logan Paul, which is why he was inserted there. Uh, the only other option I can see possibly is Randy Orton, but he's just kind of not been in the picture with Seth lately and no real reference to it at all. Um, so that's why I'm going with Drew. Not that that's anything shocking or out of the ballpark there either. Um, so with this pay-per-view PLE, I think it's going to be pretty, you're running the mill and pretty much what you expect, but that's okay. You know what I mean? Like we don't need some shocking swerve or anything like that because that's how stories don't get told in my opinion. Um, but with that being said, that is your Elimination Chamber preview as well. Let me know if you guys think anything different. If you're thinking maybe an LA Knight may win the Chamber match or a Randy Orton, or if you think everything is going to be pretty cut and dry um, with the obvious choices winning to set up our WrestleMania card. But thank you guys so much for checking out the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any feedback, like I said, feel free to drop me a comment either here on Twitter at kickashpodcast underscore or at A-S-H-M-A-N-N-S. But thank you guys for listening and hope you have an awesome day.